Hey, we're back here live at the Strata Con I mean Strata Conference, the Fluent Conference, <laughs> Strata Velocity. They got all these conferences at O'Reilly. Um, John Furrier with Jeff Frick. This is winding down day one of the Fluent Conference, Silicon Angles, the Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events of the Silicon the Noise. Our next guest is Hart Hoover, OpenStack Cloud Strategist at Rackspace. Uh, welcome to the Cube. Thank you. It's great to be here. So, uh, OpenStack at a developer conference on the front end, UX, full stack. I mean. They're blending together. I mean, we're hearing a lot of a lot of great feedback around. It's not just front, it's not just JavaScript anymore. Obviously, the queue for the folks who are watching know we were at OpenStack for three full days there. It's one of, probably one of our busiest events. Again, all developers, different kind of developers, more back end and you know, kind of middle ground. So the the flashpoint of the two worlds are coming together. Oh, Cloud totally has, has made that happen. Amazon has essentially created that developer market, the LAMP stack developers, and you got Rails, you got Python, a variety of other things, Node.js. You're seeing some more server side scripting, you're seeing a lot more low latency requirements, real software engineering going on, on the front end, not just you know, pretty websites and anymore. So, That's right. So what's your take on this and what's the OpenStack perspective? Well, I think the, uh, you know, the cloud has kind of changed the game on the regular hosting market. Uh, our fanatical support that we've prided ourselves on at Rackspace is also evolving to meet that demand. Uh, we just launched uh, developer support a few weeks ago. Um, we're actually helping customers with Rackspace SDKs um, that are, some of them are ours, some of them are community that we're contributing to, uh, like the JClouds project, or in case of JavaScript, uh, Nojitsu's Package Cloud SDK. So we're actually helping customers with this code and how it touches our infrastructure. It's a lot different from our traditional, like, yeah, we'll restart Apache for you. Well, you guys are living in the world now with Rackspace, obviously, end user side, you've been supporting consumer applications, consumer companies. Now with the enterprise hot on OpenStack, given the OpenStack has essentially, it's like having your own little Lego blocks for cloud construction. That's right. You know, if you're an enterprise, I mean, that's, yeah. it, you know, that's what I call it. I mean, if you're an enterprise, you don't necessarily want to go Amazon 100%, maybe test and dev and some uh, other things, but for the most part, they want some, you know, disaster recovery, business continuity, security. These are table stakes for enterprises. Right. It's not, you don't hear that kicked around at the Fluent Conference, you know, around <laughs> consumer apps. Well, what's so great about OpenStack <laughs> is that it can run on, you know, huge servers with security requirements behind firewalls and all that for the enterprise market, but it can also run on Raspberry Pis. We have a, a guy in the UK that made it happen. Uh, he called it Pi Stack. <laughs> he <laughs> threw OpenStack on a group of Raspberry Pis and made that happen. Um, also, we have, uh, you know, you can run OpenStack on like a $200 one laptop per child PC uh, up to, you know, this big dedicated gear um, that enterprises would want to run. And that's the power of an open cloud, right? You can run it anywhere, do anything with it. So what's kind of the gist? You said you're spending most of your time at this conference at the booth. You know, you're not doing the, doing the keynotes, you're doing the booth, you're talking to people, talking to customers. Right. What are they talking about? What's the topic of conversation? What's, what are they asking you about? What, what are their concerns? So they're mainly, uh, they're always concerned about lock-in, right? So that's the big, the big ghost in the room with regards to Amazon and now Google Compute coming out of beta. It's like one vendor runs my business and that's kind of scary for people. Um, now, on the OpenStack side, we want it to be one vendor, right, from Rackspace. <laughs> we want it to be all us, but we also understand that our customers and potential customers, you know, like the ability to put workloads where it makes sense, right? Maybe you have some at HP, maybe you have some with Red Hat, maybe you have some in a private cloud, maybe you have some at Rackspace. So, but the power of OpenStack allows that uh, vendor lock-in equation to go away, basically. Where's Rackspace right now with, with some of the, obviously OpenStack momentum was massive, and then I noticed on the earnings, not that I want to talk about earnings at all, but you know, the analysts were down on OpenStack. What, what, what don't people understand about OpenStack? Because um, you know, we, we were reporting, obviously this is a different mindset, um, and customers that we talked to, we talked to a lot of end users on the enterprise, we talked to CIOs all the time, and you know, the, the direct quote is, OpenStack is like a, like a warm blanket, it's a bridge I can cross with reliable way for the enterprise. Uh, give me a little bit of NetApp and a little bit of you know Red Hat and some OpenStack. I have my own cloud. I don't need Amazon. These right. are the kind of the sound bites we're hearing. Why is Wall Street not getting it? And you, you must have insight into Wall Street, but why are some of the people that are not getting it getting it? I mean, what's the, what's another reasoning that you think? Well, I think Amazon being first to market is a big advantage. Um, they got there first, right? And then they got to get market share based on that, right? But as OpenStack gets better and gets contributions from a bigger community, um, we're gonna, 
It's my personal opinion. We'll eventually eclipse them, right? Like, I love to say that. Like, it's such an audacious thing to say, but <laughs> like, be careful. I, we got bloggers watching. I personally believe, <laughs> personally, that you know that <laughs> am, uh, closed clouds are numbered, right? Days are numbered. I think OpenStack is the way to go. I think open clouds are the way to go, and eventually it'll happen. I'm a, it says cloud evangelist. I prefer open cloud zealot, right? Like just it's over yeah. the edge. Way to backpedal. <laughs> that's okay. I mean, that's, that's you know, every company wants to say we're going to topple Amazon. I mean, that's a, a goal, right? Right. Um, but at least, at least with OpenStack, um, you know, it's not just a single company. It's the community of companies, right? Working together um, for that open cloud alternative. How do you figure in, how do you figure in cloud foundry? Because VMware spun out uh, into Pivotal. Um, cloud Foundry has a big contributor of right. OpenStack, but yet also it's like this kind of like EMC and VMware are promoting their own stuff, abstraction layer. So is that a hedge? Is that Are they playing nicely in, in, in the community? I think they definitely are. I mean, what's cool about Cloud Foundry is it's multi-cloud backed, right? You can run it on AWS if you want, or you can run it on OpenStack if you want, or now they're going to start running it on uh, VMware. So. Yeah, it can run on multiple infrastructure services for that PaaS layer, and that's great. I love Cloud Foundry, by the way. <laughs> yeah, the, the part that I wonder, and, and I'm not a financial analyst either, but it, it just seemed like a we're at the show, John. You know, there was a great mojo about how open source and a commitment to open source as evidenced by OpenStack it really kind of had a transformative uh, impact on Rackspace in terms of the company, and it, it didn't just sound like, you know, what kind of used to, what I used to think of it as really a colo center, right. you know, a hosting center. It's, it's your industrial strength uh, colo partner. And I don't know that they get kind of what comes with open source in terms of the types of people that you can hire, the type of energy in the room, which I thought was phenomenal uh, up in Portland, and really, and maybe they, they don't get it, and maybe it hasn't been built into the valuation models in terms of what, getting behind this technology means versus just being a really efficient um, colo, colo uh, operator. Yeah. Well, the open cloud has is, is literally transformed our company. Like, we were a dedicated only house, sorry, a dedicated only shop, and now we've transitioned in from, from that to focusing on cloud, and now we're bridging those gaps and bringing in like hybrid cloud environments where we have customers running their own private cloud that we support in their data, in their data center, or they're running it in our data center, and we're supporting it there, and then they're bursting into public clouds, right? Um, and that that is run by us. Yeah. So definite hybrid cloud environment there. That's how we're bridging the gap between our our dedicated business and cloud business. Right. Well, OpenStack certainly has gained a lot of ground on. The, um, uh, I mean, Rackspace has gained a lot of halo effect with OpenStack. One of the things I remember, um, you guys are building out the cloud sites and then you know, um, through acquisitions, there wasn't a lot of developers out there. I mean, you guys were pioneering the DevOps movement. So I got to ask you about your perspective on the current state of DevOps. Obviously, it's starting to be more of a buzzword now versus yeah. you know, the hard charging guys actually doing the DevOps. Um, but DevOps now is a, is a mindset and the term that's kicked around is infrastructure as code. Right. And that is ultimately software, right? So software-led infrastructure is what we put out there on our, with, our, with our data, but you know, software-defined is kind of the big buzzword. What is the role of software going to do in the cloud as the, as the white spaces fill in? Is it orchestration? What do you see the areas that software uh, and the development community are going to add value? Well, it's all going to be about managing, managing infrastructure through code, right? Like you just said, infrastructure is code. And as that goes from that super high-end dev, I mean, eventually tools will be created that make it easy, right, for the mom and pop shop to, to run Chef 2, right, or to run Puppet 2. And when that happens, I think, and it's, it's going to happen, eventually it'll happen. And when that happens, it's going gonna, it's gonna to just democratize technology for so many people. Um, access to compute on a utility basis has changed the game. So doing that in a democratic fashion for mom and pops as well as enterprises, and when we get there, it's going to be awesome. What about Node? What do you see about Node? Node.js really a couple of years ago hit the scene hard. We saw a lot of apps using Node, a lot of people were doing prototyping, a lot of the mobile apps using Node interfacing the cloud. Are you seeing that kind of playing in as kind of tinkering, it, or it's leaking into the cloud more? Oh yes, definitely. I mean, uh, we, have, we have customers running Node in our cloud today. Um, I may have mentioned it earlier, but we do have a Node.js SDK that we partner with uh, Nojitsu on. It's called Package Cloud. Um, and so we provide support for that for our Node customers. 
Okay, Rackspace here inside the cube. We'd like having Rackspace, big fans of Rackspace. What they've done has really been impressive. They had a chance to build their own or partner with the ecosystem uh, in, in their own cloud efforts and went and did OpenStack with HP. Uh, HP, a lot of people don't know, where it was actively involved in some of the formation of OpenStack with Rackspace. And uh, you guys did a great job. I think that's a real testament to what we've always said is open source is hitting a new tipping point in this new generation where it's not about just contributing code, it's contributing a lot more than that, and that's, that's building out the ecosystem. So congratulations to Rackspace for being a great example of how to win with open source and doing it right. So Art Hoover, thanks for coming on theCUBE. This is uh, SiliconANGLE's exclusive coverage of, of uh, Fluent. Uh, this is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. We'll be back with our next guest after this short break.